Mollusca is the second largest phylum of invertebrate animals after the arthropoda. The members are known as mollusks or mollusks. Around 85,000 extant species of mollusks are recognized. The number of fossil species is estimated between 60,000 and 100,000 additional species. The proportion of undescribed species is very high. Many taxa remain poorly studied. Mollusks are the largest marine phylum, comprising about 23% of all the named marine organisms. Numerous mollusks also live in freshwater and terrestrial habitats. They are highly diverse, not just in size and anatomical structure, but also in behavior and habitat. The phylum is typically divided into eight or nine taxonomic classes, of which two are entirely extinct. Cephalopod mollusks, such as squid, cuttlefish, and octopuses, are among the most neurologically advanced of all invertebrates, and either the giant squid or the colossal squid is the largest known invertebrate species. The gastropods snails and slugs are by far the most numerous mollusks and account for 80% of the total classified species. The three most universal features defining modern mollusks are a mantle with a significant cavity used for breathing and excretion, the presence of a radula except for bivalves, and the structure of the nervous system. Other than these common elements, mollusks express great morphological diversity, so many textbooks base their descriptions on a hypothetical ancestral mollusk. See image below. This has a single limpet-like shell on top, which is made of proteins and chitin reinforced with calcium carbonate, and is secreted by a mantle covering the whole upper surface. The underside of the animal consists of a single muscular foot. Although mollusks are collimates, the coelom tends to be small. The main body cavity is a hemocele through which blood circulates, as such, their circulatory systems are mainly open. The generalized mollusk's feeding system consists of a rasping tongue, the radula, and a complex digestive system in which exuded mucus and microscopic, muscle-powered hairs called cilia play various important roles. The generalized mollusk has two paired nerve cords, or three in bivalves. The brain, in species that have one, encircles the esophagus. Most mollusks have eyes, and all have sensors to detect chemicals, vibrations, and touch. The simplest type of molluscan reproductive system relies on external fertilization, but more complex variations occur. All produce eggs, from which may emerge trochophore larvae, more complex veliger larvae, or miniature adults. The colomic cavity is reduced. They have an open circulatory system and kidney-like organs for excretion. Good evidence exists for the appearance of gastropods, cephalopods, and bivalves in the Cambrian period, 541 to 485.4 million years ago. However, the evolutionary history both of mollusks' emergence from the ancestral Lophotrochozoa and of their diversification into the well-known living and fossil forms are still subjects of vigorous debate among scientists. Mollusks have been and still are an important food source for anatomically modern humans. A risk of food poisoning exists from toxins that can accumulate in certain mollusks under specific conditions, however, and because of this, many countries have regulations to reduce this risk. Mollusks have, for centuries, also been the source of important luxury goods, notably pearls, mother of pearl, Tyrian purple dye, and sea silk. Their shells have also been used as money in some pre-industrial societies. Mollusk species can also represent hazards or pests for human activities. The bite of the blue-ringed octopus is often fatal, and that of octopus apollyon causes inflammation that can last over a month. Stings from a few species of large tropical cone shells can also kill, but their sophisticated, though easily produced, venoms have become important tools in neurological research. Schistosomiasis, also known as bilharzia, bilharziosis, or snail fever, is transmitted to humans by water snail hosts, and affects about 200 million people. Snails and slugs can also be serious agricultural pests, and accidental or deliberate introduction of some snail species into new environments has seriously damaged some ecosystems. Topic etymology The words mollusk and mollusk are both derived from the French mollusque, which originated from the Latin molluscus, from mollus, soft. 
Molluscus was itself an adaptation of Aristotle's Ta Malachia Ta Malachia, the soft ones, soft, which he applied inter alia to cuttlefish. The scientific study of mollusks is accordingly called malacology. The name molluscoida was formerly used to denote a division of the animal kingdom containing the brachiopods, bryozoans, and tunicates, the members of the three groups having been supposed to somewhat resemble the mollusks. As now known, these groups have no relation to mollusks, and very little to one another, so the name molluscoida has been abandoned. Topic. Definition The most universal features of the body structure of mollusks are a mantle with a significant cavity used for breathing and excretion, and the organization of the nervous system. Many have a calcareous shell. Mollusks have developed such a varied range of body structures, finding synapomorphies, defining characteristics to apply to all modern groups is difficult. The most general characteristic of mollusks is they are unsegmented and bilaterally symmetrical. The following are present in all modern mollusks. The dorsal part of the body wall is a mantle or pallium which secretes calcareous spicules, plates or shells. It overlaps the body with enough spare room to form a mantle cavity. The anus and genitals open into the mantle cavity. There are two pairs of main nerve cords. Other characteristics that commonly appear in textbooks have significant exceptions. Topic. Diversity Estimates of accepted described living species of mollusks vary from 50,000 to a maximum of 120,000 species. In 1969 David Nichol estimated the probable total number of living mollusk species at 107,000 of which were about 12,000 freshwater gastropods and 35,000 terrestrial. The bivalvia would comprise about 14% of the total and the other five classes less than 2% of the living mollusks. In 2009, Chapman estimated the number of described living mollusk species at 85,000. Hazapruner in 2001 estimated about 93,000 named species, which include 23% of all named marine organisms. Mollusks are second only to arthropods in numbers of living animal species, far behind the arthropods 1,113,000 but well ahead of chordates 52,000. About 200,000 living species in total are estimated, and 70,000 fossil species, although the total number of mollusk species ever to have existed, whether or not preserved, must be many times greater than the number alive today. Mollusks have more varied forms than any other animal phylum. They include snails, slugs and other gastropods, clams and other bivalves, squids and other cephalopods, and other lesser known but similarly distinctive subgroups. The majority of species still live in the oceans, from the seashores to the abyssal zone, but some form a significant part of the freshwater fauna and the terrestrial ecosystems. Mollusks are extremely diverse in tropical and temperate regions, but can be found at all latitudes. About 80% of all known mollusk species are gastropods. Cephalopoda such as squid, cuttlefish, and octopuses are among the neurologically most advanced of all invertebrates. The giant squid, which until recently had not been observed alive in its adult form, is one of the largest invertebrates, but a recently caught specimen of the colossal squid, 10 meters 33 feet long and weighing 500 kilograms 1,100 pounds, may have overtaken it. Freshwater and terrestrial mollusks appear exceptionally vulnerable to extinction. Estimates of the numbers of nonmarine mollusks vary widely, partly because many regions have not been thoroughly surveyed. There is also a shortage of specialists who can identify all the animals in any one area to species. However, in 2004 the IUCN Red List of Threatened Species included nearly 2,000 endangered nonmarine mollusks. For comparison, the great majority of mollusk species are marine, but only 41 of these appeared on the 2004 Red List. About 42% of recorded extinctions since the year 1500 are of mollusks, consisting almost entirely of nonmarine species. Topic. Hypothetical ancestral mollusk 
Because of the great range of anatomical diversity among mollusks, many textbooks start the subject of molluscan anatomy by describing what is called an archie mollusk, hypothetical generalized mollusk, or hypothetical ancestral mollusk ham, to illustrate the most common features found within the phylum. The depiction is visually rather similar to modern monoplocophorans. The generalized mollusk is bilaterally symmetrical and has a single limpet-like shell on top. The shell is secreted by a mantle covering the upper surface. The underside consists of a single muscular foot. The visceral mass, or visceropallium, is the soft, non-muscular metabolic region of the mollusk. It contains the body organs. Topic. Mantle and mantle cavity The mantle cavity, a fold in the mantle, encloses a significant amount of space. It is lined with epidermis, and is exposed, according to habitat, to sea, fresh water or air. The cavity was at the rear in the earliest mollusks, but its position now varies from group to group. The anus, a pair of osphradia, chemical sensors, in the incoming lane, the hindmost pair of gills and the exit openings of the nephridia, kidneys, and gonads reproductive organs are in the mantle cavity. The whole soft body of bivalves lies within an enlarged mantle cavity. Topic. Shell The mantle edge secretes a shell secondarily absent in a number of taxonomic groups, such as the nudibranchs that consists of mainly chitin and conchiolin, a protein hardened with calcium carbonate, except the outermost layer, which in almost all cases is all conchiolin see periostracum. Mollusks never use phosphate to construct their hard parts, with the questionable exception of cobcrephora. While most mollusk shells are composed mainly of aragonite, those gastropods that lay eggs with a hard shell use calcite sometimes with traces of aragonite to construct the eggshells, the shell consists of three layers, the outer layer, the periostracum, made of organic matter, a middle layer made of columnar calcite, and an inner layer consisting of laminated calcite, often nacreous, in some forms the shell contains openings. In abalones there are holes in the shell used for respiration and the release of egg and sperm, in the nautilus a string of tissue called the siphuncle goes through all the chambers, and the eight plates that make up the shell of chitons are penetrated with living tissue with nerves and sensory structures. Topic. Foot The underside consists of a muscular foot, which has adapted to different purposes in different classes. The foot carries a pair of statocysts, which act as balance sensors. In gastropods, it secretes mucus as a lubricant to aid movement. In forms having only a top shell, such as limpets, the foot acts as a sucker attaching the animal to a hard surface, and the vertical muscles clamp the shell down over it. In other mollusks, the vertical muscles pull the foot and other exposed soft parts into the shell. In bivalves, the foot is adapted for burrowing into the sediment, in cephalopods it is used for jet propulsion, and the tentacles and arms are derived from the foot. Topic. Circulatory system Most mollusks' circulatory systems are mainly open. Although mollusks are colomates, their coelums are reduced to fairly small spaces enclosing the heart and gonads. The main body cavity is a hemocele through which blood and colomic fluid circulate and which encloses most of the other internal organs. These hemocelic spaces act as an efficient hydrostatic skeleton. The blood of these mollusks contains the respiratory pigment hemocyanin as an oxygen carrier. The heart consists of one or more pairs of atria auricles, which receive oxygenated blood from the gills and pump it to the ventricle, which pumps it into the aorta main artery, which is fairly short and opens into the hemocele. The atria of the heart also function as part of the excretory system by filtering waste products out of the blood and dumping it into the coelum as urine. A pair of nephridia. Little kidneys 
To the rear of and connected to the sealum extracts any reusable materials from the urine and dumps additional waste products into it, and then ejects it via tubes that discharge into the mantle cavity. Exceptions to the above are the mollusks planorbidae or ram's horn snails, which are air-breathing snails that use iron-based hemoglobin instead of the copper-based hemocyanin to carry oxygen through their blood. Topic. Respiration. Most mollusks have only one pair of gills, or even only a singular gill. Generally, the gills are rather like feathers in shape, although some species have gills with filaments on only one side. They divide the mantle cavity so water enters near the bottom and exits near the top. Their filaments have three kinds of cilia, one of which drives the water current through the mantle cavity, while the other two help to keep the gills clean. If the Osphradia detect noxious chemicals or possibly sediment entering the mantle cavity, the gill cilia may stop beating until the unwelcome intrusions have ceased. Each gill has an incoming blood vessel connected to the hemocele and an outgoing one to the heart. Topic. Eating, digestion, and excretion Members of the mollusk family use intracellular digestion to function. Most mollusks have muscular mouths with rattli, tongues, bearing many rows of chitinous teeth, which are replaced from the rear as they wear out. The radula primarily functions to scrape bacteria and algae off rocks, and is associated with the odontophore, a cartilaginous supporting organ. The radula is unique to the mollusks and has no equivalent in any other animal. Mollusks' mouths also contain glands that secrete slimy mucus, to which the food sticks. Beating cilia tiny hairs, drive the mucus towards the stomach, so the mucus forms a long string called a food string at the tapered rear end of the stomach and projecting slightly into the hindgut as the prostyle, a backward pointing cone of feces and mucus, which is rotated by further cilia so it acts as a bobbin, winding the mucus string onto itself. Before the mucus string reaches the prostyle, the acidity of the stomach makes the mucus less sticky and frees particles from it. The particles are sorted by yet another group of cilia, which send the smaller particles, mainly minerals, to the prostyle so eventually they are excreted, while the larger ones, mainly food, are sent to the stomach's cecum, a pouch with no other exit, to be digested. The sorting process is by no means perfect. Periodically, circular muscles at the hindgut's entrance pinch off and excrete a piece of the prostyle, preventing the prostyle from growing too large. The anus, in the part of the mantle cavity, is swept by the outgoing lane of the current created by the gills. Carnivorous mollusks usually have simpler digestive systems, as the head has largely disappeared in bivalves, the mouth has been equipped with labial palps, two on each side of the mouth, to collect the detritus from its mucus. Topic. Nervous system The cephalic mollusks have two pairs of main nerve cords organized around a number of paired ganglia, the visceral cords serving the internal organs and the pedal ones serving the foot. Most pairs of corresponding ganglia on both sides of the body are linked by commissures, relatively large bundles of nerves. The ganglia above the gut are the cerebral, the pleural, and the visceral, which are located above the esophagus, gullet. The pedal ganglia, which control the foot, are below the esophagus and their commissure and connectives to the cerebral and pleural ganglia surround the esophagus in a circumesophageal nerve ring or nerve collar. The acephalic mollusks, i.e., bivalves, also have this ring but it is less obvious and less important. The bivalves have only three pairs of ganglia, cerebral, pedal, and visceral, with the visceral as the largest and most important of the three functioning as the principal center of thinking. Some such as the scallops have eyes around the edges of their shells which connect to a pair of looped nerves and which provide the ability to distinguish between light and shadow. Topic. Reproduction The simplest molluscan reproductive system relies on external fertilization, but with more complex variations. All produce eggs, from which may emerge trochophore larvae, more complex veliger larvae, or miniature adults. 
Two gonads sit next to the coelom, a small cavity that surrounds the heart, into which they shed ova or sperm. The nephridia extract the gametes from the coelom and emit them into the mantle cavity. Mollusks that use such a system remain of one sex all their lives and rely on external fertilization. Some mollusks use internal fertilization and or are hermaphrodites, functioning as both sexes. Both of these methods require more complex reproductive systems. The most basic molluscan larva is a trochophore, which is planktonic and feeds on floating food particles by using the two bands of cilia around its equator to sweep food into the mouth, which uses more cilia to drive them into the stomach, which uses further cilia to expel undigested remains through the anus. New tissue grows in the bands of mesoderm in the interior, so the apical tuft and anus are pushed further apart as the animal grows. The trochophore stage is often succeeded by a veliger stage in which the prototroch, the equatorial band of cilia nearest the apical tuft, develops into the velum, veil, a pair of cilia bearing lobes with which the larva swims. Eventually, the larva sinks to the seafloor and metamorphoses into the adult form. While metamorphosis is the usual state in mollusks, the cephalopods differ in exhibiting direct development. The hatchling is a miniaturized form of the adult. Topic: Ecology. Topic: Feeding. Most mollusks are herbivorous, grazing on algae or filter feeders. For those grazing, two feeding strategies are predominant. Some feed on microscopic, filamentous algae, often using their radula as a rake to comb up filaments from the seafloor. Others feed on macroscopic plants, such as kelp, rasping the plant surface with its radula. To employ this strategy, the plant has to be large enough for the mollusk to sit on, so smaller macroscopic plants are not as often eaten as their larger counterparts. Filter feeders are mollusks that feed by straining suspended matter and food particle from water, typically by passing the water over their gills. Most bivalves are filter feeders. Cephalopods are primarily predatory, and the radula takes a secondary role to the jaws and tentacles in food acquisition. The Monoplacophoran neopolina uses its radula in the usual fashion, but its diet includes protists such as the Xenophyophore stanophyllum. Sacoglossan sea slugs suck the sap from algae, using their one row radula to pierce the cell walls, whereas Dorid nudibranchs and some Vetigastropoda feed on sponges and others feed on hydroids. An extensive list of mollusks with unusual feeding habits is available in the appendix of Graham, A. 1955. Molluscan diets. Journal of Molluscan Studies. 31, 3 to 4, 144. Topic. Classification. Opinions vary about the number of classes of mollusks. For example, the table below shows seven living classes and two extinct ones. Although they are unlikely to form a clade, some older works combine the Caudophaveata and Selenogasters into one class, the Aplacophora. Two of the commonly recognized classes are known only from fossils. Classification into higher taxa for these groups has been and remains problematic. A phylogenetic study suggests the Polyplacophora form a clade with a monophyletic Aplacophora. Additionally, it suggests a sister taxon relationship exists between the bivalvia and the gastropoda. Tentaculita may also be in Mollusca. See tentaculites. Topic: Evolutionary history. Topic: Fossil record. Good evidence exists for the appearance of gastropods, e.g. Aldonella, cephalopods, e.g. Plectroniceras, nectaries, and bivalves, Pohedaea, Fordia, towards the middle of the Cambrian period, c. 500 million years ago. Though arguably each of these may belong only to the stem lineage of their respective classes. However, the evolutionary history both of the emergence of mollusks from the ancestral group Lophotrochozoa, and of their diversification into the well-known living and fossil forms, is still vigorously debated. 
Debate occurs about whether some Ediacaran and early Cambrian fossils really are mollusks. Kimbarella, from about 555 million years ago, has been described by some paleontologists as mollusk-like, but others are unwilling to go further than probable bilaterian. If that, there is an even sharper debate about whether Wewaxia, from about 505 million years ago, was a mollusk, and much of this centers on whether its feeding apparatus was a type of radula or more similar to that of some polychaete worms. Nicholas Butterfield, who opposes the idea that Wewaxia was a mollusk, has written that earlier microfossils from 515 to 510 million years ago are fragments of a genuinely mollusk-like radula. This appears to contradict the concept that the ancestral molluscan radula was mineralized. However, the Helchinellids, which first appear over 540 million years ago in early Cambrian rocks from Siberia and China, are thought to be early mollusks with rather snail-like shells. Shelled mollusks therefore predate the earliest trilobites. Although most Helchinellid fossils are only a few millimeters long, specimens a few centimeters long have also been found, most with more limpet-like shapes. The tiny specimens have been suggested to be juveniles and the larger ones adults. Some analyses of Helchinellids concluded these were the earliest gastropods. However, other scientists are not convinced these early Cambrian fossils show clear signs of the torsion that identifies modern gastropods twists the internal organs so the anus lies above the head. Volborthella, some fossils of which predate 530 million years ago, was long thought to be a cephalopod, but discoveries of more detailed fossils showed its shell was not secreted, but built from grains of the mineral silicon dioxide silica, and it was not divided into a series of compartments by septa as those of fossil-shelled cephalopods and the living nautilus are. Volborthella's classification is uncertain. The late Cambrian fossil Plectroniceras is now thought to be the earliest clearly cephalopod fossil, as its shell had septa and a siphuncle, a strand of tissue that Nautilus uses to remove water from compartments it has vacated as it grows, and which is also visible in fossil ammonite shells. However, Plectroniceras and other early cephalopods crept along the seafloor instead of swimming, as their shells contained a ballast of stony deposits on what is thought to be the underside, and had stripes and blotches on what is thought to be the upper surface. All cephalopods with external shells except the nautiloids became extinct by the end of the Cretaceous period 65 million years ago. However, the shell-less coleoidea squid, octopus, cuttlefish are abundant today. The early Cambrian fossils Fordia and Pohedaea are regarded as bivalves. Modern looking. Bivalves appeared in the Ordovician period, 488 to 443 million years ago. One bivalve group, the Rudists, became major reef builders in the Cretaceous, but became extinct in the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event. Even so, bivalves remain abundant and diverse. The Hyulitha are a class of extinct animals with a shell and operculum that may be mollusks. Authors who suggest they deserve their own phylum do not comment on the position of this phylum in the tree of life. Topic. Phylogeny The phylogeny evolutionary family tree of mollusks is a controversial subject. In addition to the debates about whether Kimbarella and any of the Halwaxiids were mollusks or closely related to mollusks, debates arise about the relationships between the classes of living mollusks. In fact, some groups traditionally classified as mollusks may have to be redefined as distinct but related. Mollusks are generally regarded members of the Lophotrochozoa, a group defined by having trochophore larvae and, in the case of living Lophophorata, a feeding structure called a Lophophore. The other members of the Lophotrochozoa are the annelid worms and seven marine phyla. The diagram on the right summarizes a phylogeny presented in 2007. Because the relationships between the members of the family tree are uncertain, it is difficult to identify the features inherited from the last common ancestor of all mollusks. For example, it is uncertain whether the ancestral mollusk was metameric composed of repeating units. If it was, that would suggest an origin from an annelid-like worm. 
Scientists disagree about this, Garibet and colleagues concluded. In 2006, the repetition of gills and of the foot's retractor muscles were later developments, while in 2007, Sigwert concluded the ancestral mollusk was metameric, and it had a foot used for creeping and a shell that was mineralized. In one particular branch of the family tree, the shell of conchiferans is thought to have evolved from the spicules small spines of a placophorans, but this is difficult to reconcile with the embryological origins of spicules. The molluscan shell appears to have originated from a mucus coating, which eventually stiffened into a cuticle. This would have been impermeable and thus forced the development of more sophisticated respiratory apparatus in the form of gills. Eventually, the cuticle would have become mineralized, using the same genetic machinery engrailed as most other bilaterian skeletons. The first mollusk shell almost certainly was reinforced with the mineral aragonite. The evolutionary relationships within the mollusks are also debated, and the diagrams below show two widely supported reconstructions. Morphological analyses tend to recover a conchifran clade that receives less support from molecular analyses, although these results also lead to unexpected paraphyles, for instance scattering the bivalves throughout all other mollusk groups. However, an analysis in 2009 using both morphological and molecular phylogenetics comparisons concluded the mollusks are not monophyletic, in particular, Scaphopoda and bivalvia are both separate, monophyletic lineages unrelated to the remaining molluscan classes. The traditional Traditional phylum mollusca is polyphyletic, and it can only be made monophyletic if scaphopods and bivalves are excluded. A 2010 analysis recovered the traditional conchiferin and aculiferin groups, and showed mollusks were monophyletic, demonstrating that available data for selenogasters was contaminated. Current molecular data are insufficient to constrain the molluscan phylogeny, and since the methods used to determine the confidence in clades are prone to overestimation, it is risky to place too much emphasis even on the areas of which different studies agree. Rather than eliminating unlikely relationships, the latest studies add new permutations of internal molluscan relationships, even bringing the conchifran hypothesis into question. Topic. Human interaction For millennia, mollusks have been a source of food for humans, as well as important luxury goods, notably pearls, mother of pearl, Tyrian purple dye, sea silk, and chemical compounds. Their shells have also been used as a form of currency in some pre-industrial societies. A number of species of mollusks can bite or sting humans, and some have become agricultural pests. Topic. Uses by humans Mollusks, especially bivalves such as clams and mussels, have been an important food source since at least the advent of anatomically modern humans, and this has often resulted in overfishing. Other commonly eaten mollusks include octopuses and squids, whelks, oysters, and scallops. In 2005, China accounted for 80% of the global mollusk catch, netting almost 11 million tons 11 million long tons, 12 million short tons. Within Europe, France remained the industry leader. Some countries regulate importation and handling of mollusks and other seafood, mainly to minimize the poison risk from toxins that can sometimes accumulate in the animals. Most mollusks with shells can produce pearls, but only the pearls of bivalves and some gastropods, whose shells are lined with nacre, are valuable. The best natural pearls are produced by marine pearl oysters, Pinctata margaritifera and Pinctata mertensi, which live in the tropical and subtropical waters of the Pacific Ocean. Natural pearls form when a small foreign object gets stuck between the mantle and shell. The two methods of culturing pearls insert either seeds or beads into oysters. The seed method uses grains of ground shell from freshwater mussels, and overharvesting for this purpose has endangered several freshwater mussel species in the southeastern United States. The pearl industry is so important in some areas, significant sums of money are spent on monitoring the health of farmed mollusks. Other luxury and high-status products were made from mollusks. Tyrian purple, made from the ink glands of murex shells fetched its weight in silver in the 4th century BC, according to Theopompus. 
The discovery of large numbers of murex shells on Crete suggests the Minoans may have pioneered the extraction of imperial purple. During the Middle Minoan period in the 20th-18th centuries BC, centuries before the Tyrians. Sea silk is a fine, rare, and valuable fabric produced from the long silky threads bisis, secreted by several bivalve mollusks, particularly Pinna nobilis, to attach themselves to the seabed. Procopius, writing on the Persian Wars circa 550 CE stated that the five hereditary satraps governors of Armenia who received their insignia from the Roman emperor were given clamus or cloaks made from lana pinna. Apparently, only the ruling classes were allowed to wear these clamus. Mollusk shells, including those of cowries, were used as a kind of money, shell money in several pre-industrial societies. However, these currencies generally differed in important ways from the standardized government-backed and controlled money familiar to industrial societies. Some shell currencies were not used for commercial transactions, but mainly as social status displays at important occasions, such as weddings. When used for commercial transactions, they functioned as commodity money, as a tradable commodity whose value differed from place to place, often as a result of difficulties in transport, and which was vulnerable to incurable inflation if more efficient transport or gold rush behavior appeared. Topic. Bioindicators Bivalve mollusks are used as bioindicators to monitor the health of aquatic environments in both fresh water and the marine environments. Their population status or structure, physiology, behavior or the level of contamination with elements or compounds can indicate the state of contamination status of the ecosystem. They are particularly useful since they are sessile so that they are representative of the environment where they are sampled or placed. Potamopyrgus antipoderum is used by some water treatment plants to test for estrogen mimicking pollutants from industrial agriculture. Topic: Harmful to humans. Topic: Stings and bites. Some mollusks sting or bite, but deaths from mollusk venoms total less than 10% of those from jellyfish stings. All octopuses are venomous, but only a few species pose a significant threat to humans. Blue-ringed octopuses in the genus Hopalaclana, which live around Australia and New Guinea, bite humans only if severely provoked, but their venom kills 25% of human victims. Another tropical species, Octopus apollyon, causes severe inflammation that can last for over a month even if treated correctly, and the bite of octopus rubescens can cause necrosis that lasts longer than one month if untreated, and headaches and weakness persisting for up to a week even if treated. All species of cone snails are venomous and can sting painfully when handled, although many species are too small to pose much of a risk to humans, and only a few fatalities have been reliably reported. Their venom is a complex mixture of toxins, some fast-acting and others slower but deadlier. The effects of individual cone shell toxins on victims' nervous systems are so precise as to be useful tools for research in neurology, and the small size of their molecules makes it easy to synthesize them. Topic. Disease vectors Schistosomiasis, also known as bilharzia, bilharziosis or snail fever, a disease caused by the fluke worm schistosoma, is second only to malaria as the most devastating parasitic disease in tropical countries. An estimated 200 million people in 74 countries are infected with the disease 100 million in Africa alone. The parasite has 13 known species, two of which infect humans. The parasite itself is not a mollusk, but all the species have freshwater snails as intermediate hosts. Topic. Pests Some species of mollusks, particularly certain snails and slugs, can be serious crop pests, and when introduced into new environments, can unbalance local ecosystems. 
One such pest, the giant African snail Akatina fulica, has been introduced to many parts of Asia, as well as to many islands in the Indian Ocean and Pacific Ocean. In the 1990s, this species reached the West Indies. Attempts to control it by introducing the predatory snail Euglandina rosea proved disastrous, as the predator ignored Akatina fulica and went on to extirpate several native snail species, instead. <laughs> Notes <laughs>